because you never know who could get you in trouble. Did you get advice from a veteran player when you came in with the Niners or when you got to Pittsburgh in 06? Well, uh, yeah, you know, Oregon State, you know, we've been we've been sending guys to the NFL uh, frequently now over the past couple of years, and we're continuing to do that. So, yeah, you know, players come back, they talk to you, but, you, you know, you're never really prepared until you go out there, and, you know, and you're, and you're really doing it. Richard Siegler, uh, the CFL versus the NFL, uh, much different for you as a linebacker? Yes, yes, yeah, the game's different. You know, there's instead of 11 players, there's 12 players. The field's uh, 20 yards longer and 15, 15 yards wider. You know, it's a, it's, a, it's a fast game. You know, we have we have a fast play clock and only three downs. So it's a special teams is very big out here. So, you know, it's a, it's, it's a different game. But when you um, – you look at it, it's still football. You're still, still lining up tackling. What was Dennis Erickson like to play for? Dennis Erickson was a great man. You know, he gave me the opportunity in, in uh, San Francisco. He's uh, doing doing good for himself out there at Arizona State, and I wish him the best. And, and was he different as a as a pro coach than a college coach? Was that tough to see him struggle there? Yeah, it was, it was, it was real tough to see him struggle because, you know, with the NFL, it's it's all on who they give you, and you, you, you're kind of listening to the front office on who's going to play and who's not going to play. So he, he he didn't really have too much control, and they ended up getting them getting them up out of there. And when you look at football, I mean, Mike Riley has done a good job of uh, sort of continuing what went on there. Uh, but at your time, it was a pretty pivotal time for Oregon State football. Why do you think uh, you guys had the success you did? Um, I, I played I played for Mike Riley my last year. So, so, so I've, I've had the opportunity to play under Coach Mike Riley, and he's a great coach. Um, I, I think that you know Oregon State's been able to continue our success because of you know the recruiting and the, and the great coaching staff that we have there. And was it shocking to go from Erickson, who you know Erickson kind of shoots from the hip; he's a lot looser, probably has better a little better rapport with players. To go from Erickson to Riley, what was that like? Well, I, I want to say that uh, Erickson has a better rapport than um, than Coach Mike Riley, but you know. There's just different styles of coaching, you know. Some 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 people root raw and scream a lot, and some people are real mellow and calm about it. Coach Mike Riley, we can't take nothing away from uh, his season this year. He had an excellent excellent season, and it's just sad that it had to end with a loss to the Mangy Ducks. And you know, when you look at Riley, I mean, with the media, he's pretty soft spoken. Out, you know, when he's out talking to boosters, he's soft spoken. Uh, does he get fired up? Yeah, Mike Riley. You know, he's a very passionate man. Uh, I, I almost, you know, if he, he almost scares me from coaching uh, or even wanting to get into coaching because uh, the year I spent with him, you know, he, the man barely gets any sleep. He's up all hours of the night trying to put put together game plans and, you know, trying to take Oregon State all the way to the next level. He so, does look tired all the time. He's got rings around his eyes. He, he looks worn out all the time. No, I'm not. I didn't, I didn't say that. You did. Yeah, I did. I said it. I I'm said not, it. Well, that's, that's because it's a stressful job. You know, the, you know they, they, they just, we just had the opportunity to go to the Rose Bowl and we ended up messing that off, but you know that game against Oregon is, is bigger than any game of the year, and it pretty much makes or breaks your whole season with that game. And you know we ended up losing at home this year, and it made it even ten times worse. When when you look at Chad Johnson, Ocho Cinco, do you just shake your head and smile, or because you know of your you your knowledge of him as a Oregon State player, or is are you surprised at all by what by what he does? You know, he he was flashy even while uh, he played with us at Oregon State. But you know, I'm I'm happy to see Chad doing so doing so well. You know, because he, you know, he, he's not only representing himself, but he's but he's representing Oregon State, and I think he's done it, done it in a very classy way. Richard Sagler uh, with the Toronto Argonauts. Now, how tough will it be for you to get back in the NFL? Are you getting any advice from your agent? Uh, have you had a sniff from the league? Uh, will this all happen in the off season? Uh, how, what's what's your challenge? Uh, my challenge is to basically just you know get my foot back in the door. That's that's the thing with the NFL is once you know once you slip, it's kind of hard to gain your balance again and, and, and get momentum and get get it rolling again. But you know I'm not I'm not too. Uh, it, I would really love to go back. I'm having a great time out here in Toronto playing playing some good football. Uh, uh, we didn't go to the Great Cup this year, but um, a former Beaver Brandon Browner he went with the Calgary Stampeders. So uh, Derek Doggett, a former Beaver, he's out here playing with uh, Edmonton. So, it's, you know, some guys out here, Ken Simonton played out here last year. So, you know, the CFL, man, it's, man, it's, a, it's a good experience. I'm enjoying myself. I'm learning learning a lot more about about the game of football. You know, Mike Riley coached out here. I think he won a great cup championship while he was out here. So mm-hmm. 
as far as as far as lear- I'm learning a lot. I'm having a lot of fun. And compared to last year, I'm living my life. And you know, I've been up. I've done stories in Calgary when Jeff Garcia was a quarterback in Calgary. Uh, people don't know this. Nobody in the NFL would give him a chance. Uh, once he got Bill Walsh's blessing, he got back into the league, the 49ers. Now he's this quarterback who sort of has this blessing, and he can go on. Is it just as simple as somebody giving you a chance? Yeah, you know, all it takes is one GM, one one owner, one coach to like you. And, and, and you can take you as far as far as your talent, talent will let you go. I mean, the NFL, there's a lot of talented guys out there, and uh, everybody just doesn't always get the opportunity. Richard Siegler joining us. Richard, I'll cut you loose in a second. But you talked early in the interview about surrounding yourself with the right people and the prostitution charges that were dropped in, in uh, early, earlier this year. Uh, what have you changed uh, with the people around you uh, that will keep you out of trouble or at least out of being targeted in the future? Yeah, it wasn't. It wasn't that I was surrounding myself with a uh, with with uh, bad character guys or anything like that. It just happened to be like like you just said. I was targeted by by the, by the police, and they you know they seen they seen they thought they could have an opportunity to try to make their name off of a professional athlete, make their name and their career off of a professional athlete. I'm not bitter about the situation or or anything, but you know it's just it's just sad that I had to you know lose so much. And you know you did lose something. I mean, there's, is there a chance here that you would sue the authorities in Las Vegas, or uh, are you just wanting to put it in the past? I no, I, I actually attempted to sue to uh, sue the Las Vegas Metropolitan Police Department, but it, it's very difficult. You know, sometimes the police, you know, they they I don't want to say it, but sometimes they, you know, they actually you know they kill people, they beat people, they do all sorts of crazy, crazy things to people. And, if, and you know, it just, it just seems seems too much. You know, that that seems like an exhausting task. And I, I'd rather just put it behind me. I'm out here in Toronto having a blast. My name's cleared. So I'm just trying to, you know, look forward to tomorrow and not look back on yesterday. All right, Richard Sigler, thank you for coming on, man. All right, thank you. Take care, man. All right, Oregon State, former linebacker, outspoken guy. Uh, sometimes what happens in Vegas doesn't stay in Vegas. I think that's the lesson here. Uh, Sigler fighting his way, trying to get back into the NFL.